What is true definition of AGI? Is it a super intelligent remote worker that can code better than any human? Or is it something deeper, like an agent that you can drop into an unfamiliar domain and it will be able to figure out everything by itself, the rules, the tools, the goals, without any step-by-step menu. In this episode, we explore the spectrum of artificial general intelligence delivered to you by actual builders. We have experts debating if we are five years away from the singularity, or if complete AGI is actually impossible without human wisdom and human supervision. We talk about the massive shift to the workforce, the risks of cybersecurity, and if we're building a tool or replacement. If you want to know where the future is heading, you need to listen to this. Welcome to Attention Span. The true definition of AGI that like the original researchers of AI have talked about is being able to drop an agent in any environment and the agent to be able to be successful, plan and be successful, learn skills efficiently on the fly. That's how humans work. Obviously, we have mm-hmm. degrees of abilities, but if you drop me in a basketball game and I don't know anything about basketball, I might <laughs> observe people a little bit and then deduce you know, how, how I'm going to be able to do things or someone can teach me for an hour and then I, I can acquire the skill. I'm not going to be great, but I can start learning it. Whereas AIs right now, when you drop them in a totally new environment, they tend to not be able to do anything. And so because they're function of their training, we haven't seen AIs that really generalize beyond the training. Now, like modern startups, modern labs, change the definition of AI, they call it like a remote worker. We're going to create a remote worker that is like human level at certain domains. Well, okay, you know, that's, of course, that's going to happen. I mean, I'm talking about it happening in coding. And then if you get data for most knowledge work out there, yes, you're going to be able to create a general purpose remote worker. Is that AGI? I don't think so, because it's not going to be generalizing and efficiently learning. And and those are the big breakthroughs we need to get to AGI. And I feel like, yes, we're going to get more breakthroughs and we're going to get closer and closer. But I think ultimately we need to understand the nature of the mind and need to understand consciousness. And we need to understand the brain a lot better to be able to get the final breakthrough, I think, in, in simulating a mind and machines. Yeah, I haven't noticed any doomism in your interviews or anything like this about AGI. No, I think I think there's a big risk in AI, like any other technology, but I don't think there's a Skynet type risk, like from that movie uh, Terminator, where you know there's a single AI entity that's taking over the world. I don't think that's plausible. So if you achieve AGI, it becomes so good, so intelligent that it would it can construct its own tools and would it need us. And so part of the reason why I don't like to sit down and try to predict AGI because there are certain outcomes that we don't have control over. So if we're actually going to achieve AGI and then ASI, which is super intelligence, then it doesn't matter what we predict because then the world is going to rapidly change. We're going to reach the point that's called the singularity. So I'd rather prepare for what I think the more likely world is, is uh, AI that is continuously improving, becoming more autonomous but it's generally still a tool. I think AGI is something that's far from the world that I see, in honesty. The world that I see tends to be like, rather than artificial general intelligence, it's like practical, specialized intelligence. And so I think that AGI oftentimes think about in the research labs, you know, folks that will come up with good definitions. If we take a definition of AGI as like, can a model pass a Turing test? I would suggest that we're probably, you know, in that ballpark already. Uh, what's the practical implication of that? I don't spend too much of my time thinking about the Terminator style scenarios, but I do spend a lot of my time thinking about what does having this generalized intelligence look like when you actually have businesses processes like a company, Fortune 200, like Marshall McLennan, mm-hmm. or you know another organization that I mentioned earlier, like Checker, or or you know any of these other companies that have a lot of productivity that they've unlocked via business practices over the past previous decades. And that productivity is about to take a step function change. I mean, mm-hmm. to me, that's really kind of like the interesting area for where this is going to go. There's probably some deeper philosophical questions about what will happen like over, you know, five, 10, 20 year period. We found it pretty hard to even predict what's going to happen 18 months from now in AI. And so I think uh, that's really where a lot of my focus has been is what's going to be the practical implication on both enterprise and consumer. I prefer to be more down to 
to us looking at the what we can do from the engineering point of view. I definitely think that the co-agency and hybrid systems where humans and AI are collaborating are the next step. Whether it is the last step or not, I honestly don't know. I have no idea. I, I personally don't think that there is such a thing as complete AGI. There will always be some need in uh, the ground truth, which you cannot get from anywhere apart from the human wisdom. That's what I love talking to practitioners because basically every time I ask a question about AGI, people say, uh, well, I try to look more practical on that. And you create this whole thing. You really know like how it works practically. So I think it's very helpful to have this narrative out. I think this is maybe good, both good and bad because, well, we are developing step by step and every step seems quite small. And maybe within those small steps, there is kind of a risk to lose the bigger picture. So AGI, you know, is a, a topic people sort of like, it's such a great science fiction topic and ASI for superhuman intelligence and all those things. And it becomes almost a philosophical conversation with lots of people of like, Like, you know, what is, how do we know that we've actually reached it? Over a nice glass of wine and go indulge in a nice conversation about that. I tend to be just much more pragmatically focused of like, we have this AI that's, you know, is it AGI? I don't know. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. It's pretty helpful, though. It's a very useful tool. I really like being able to use it. And so I very much focus on that. There will be, you know, the things that people worry about with AGI in terms of the way that people's jobs change and, and potential disruption to jobs that come with that. Those are very real concerns, mm -hmm. but those are real concerns with the tools that we have today. And they've been very real concerns with, you know, mm -hmm. back to the Industrial Revolution, with the invention of the PC, and like the number of jobs that have changed, they change. And that's hard for societies to sort of work through, but they do work through them. When I think about AGI, I hear the debate really being about around, hey, the world as we know it is going to work differently. What does that mean for me? That's the important question for everyone to work through. Are we close to understanding that or just more questions? It's interesting how developers, programmers are going to be one of the first places to grapple with this that the role is going to change and so you're going to need to you know the ability to sort of remember some arcane API or quickly search for it is less important the ability to use the AI tool is suddenly much more important it's funny the calculator analogy like there's some companies that are interviewing for developers and trying to prevent them from using you know AI in the interviews and I was talking to another company was like that's a totally wrong approach mm -hmm. they should be using the tool I want them maybe using the most advanced tools and showing that they're comfortable and fluent in it because that's where the developer world is moving and they need to be good at that they're going to have to work through like how does the developer job change but being comfortable and fluent with the tools is going to be a key part of that how long will it take do you think to be for everyone to be more productive um, more knowledgeable about agents and for agents to work properly like from two to five years to get to a place where people are very frequently using agents in a large portion of their professional life i think that's probably the right timeline yeah my personal belief is that with AGI, it is ultimately an accelerant and a partner to humans. The thing that makes us unique as a species is we are inherently creative and opinionated and we are so dynamic in that we constantly change. You know, the way that AI has been built right now is that it is meant to reflect human intelligence and synthesize it at levels of capacity well beyond what we've ever seen before. And with AGI, it's the ability to iterate off of that and actually generate and create. And I think it'll mimic some of those human behaviors, but I don't fundamentally believe that it will replace them. And so if I then apply that back down at a software level, AGI will fundamentally change the experience of like how we would need to interact with software to accomplish a task. And it could potentially accomplish the majority of that task. But I believe that it will still need some amount of direction or perspective from a human lens to drive it. We all as a community has been have been struggling now to define uh, AGI and the definition itself has been changing ever since uh, ChatGPT came to the world. In my opinion, AGI is achieving a system that can be better than any human at any topic. That is AGI, which is a very, very hard goal to achieve. We don't have that today. We have these systems that are better than us in some domains, but only better than yeah. the average of us, not better, like even in coding, for example, we still are not better than the best human coder. Mm -hmm. We're still behind them. I think AI is now like 89th or 90th, something like that across the world when you rank them with amazing coders uh, that we have. So imagine now doing that for coding, for legal, and for medicine, and for chemistry, and for quantum physics, and for architecture, and for poetry, and for art, and for dancing. Now that is AGI, in my opinion, and I still think that's five years out. Just five years, okay. <laughs>
<laughs> the reason why the reason why just five years is because of coding. So everybody right now, the big labs, they're very focused on the coding problem to get the coding systems to be as good, a, a better than the best human at coding. And once that is achieved, then now the AI system can start working on itself. And once the AI system can start working on itself, then that will speed up the timeline significantly. We're expecting that the coding systems will reach that point within the next two years. And as soon as they reach mm -hmm. that, yeah, I would say a maximum of three years of them working nonstop day and night, they will be able to figure this out across all the media. The AGI discussion is an interesting one. I think, uh, I forget who said this, but I, I liked the description of it that I heard that it's like a, it's a process that's going to be continual, mm -hmm. continual improvement. And it's not going to be like a before and after, right? These things just continuing to get more and more and more capable and doing more for us. And at a certain point, you're going to look at them and you're going to be yeah. like we already do today, realize that they're incredibly powerful and incredibly intelligent. At the end of the day, like treating intelligence uh, as a single construct is difficult because there is like different levels of intelligence, right? There is like the cheap types of intelligence, which is just like raw knowledge and facts where like the models can like spit out infinite versions of something at like near zero cost. There is like pattern recognition or like common things like writing boilerplate code, summarizing documents and like generating standard designs. All that stuff is like quite not easy to do, but it's been a lot of long time development, but I think there will be a kind of like bifurcation of like expensive and cheap intelligence. So like the expensive types of intelligence are things like human agency, creativity, original insight, taste and vision, and uh, the stuff that like feels like it's like genius or original because it can't be reverse engineers from, from the data. And so I think the kind of going back to the analogy around having AI systems that evolve and like kind of like doing both of those things, like the ones where like we can do it for cheap, there'll be less need for like a human in the loop and uh, fact checking for like the ones that the things that are like will be more difficult or require like more expensive types of intelligence like that's pretty where like human agency tastes and all these things that you can't really explain necessarily like in data will become like more important so like the main constraint now really is to like embed those models and like kind of wrapping them into products that can like solve real problems what do i feel about agi my sense is it's an inevitability it's a matter of when not if it's going to happen from a security landscape. It's going to be yet another tool that attackers are using. Already attackers use AI to have highly personalized and realistic social engineering that's leading to more compromised identities. Certainly AGI will help that, but I think it's going to completely change even once attackers break in, how quickly they're able to compromise an organization and their data. And so just all of this is going to mean that the timeline for what happens and how quickly people get breached and the impact of that is much higher. Even whether it's a cyber attack or unwanted AI agent actions, how do we think about reversibility? So I think like reversibility, it only makes the problem more acute. The solution to the problem is still probably not that different, which is being able to really, I talked earlier about how do you understand this whole timeline of what an agent actually did, to having those guardrails in place. If you understand those, you have the guardrails. Yes, you're going to miss up some stuff in the guardrails, but you can can understand, you can look at all the actions and rank them essentially by their risk. And AGI will help with that to make understanding of that risk like a lot, a lot better, a lot fewer false positives and false negatives and really elevating the things that are the highest risk actions. And then it's about how do you have the integrations into all the different technologies that allow you to quickly understand what changed and go into that system and reverse that change. Do you think this system, AGI system will act on itself for whatever decision it is, or it still will be hackers who decides? Well, I mean, I think there's uh, a good question. I don't know the answer to that. I, I think it's a great question. I mean, I think AGI, some version of it will be used by humans that are giving a very, like, very broad outcome. Whereas today with AI agents, you have to give a very specific outcome, right? With AGI, you could give a very broad outcome. So you could have, from a national security perspective, you could have a foreign government that's trying to wage war on another country give very broad outcomes for what it's looking for, and AGI will just go figure out how to execute on those outcomes. I do think that it's, like, again, it's an accelerant of, of what's already happening. There'll probably be new vectors that AGI discovers of, hey, this is like an interesting vector of, of an attack, or on the defense side as well, here's like an interesting vector of things that we can defend against both proactively and reactively. It's just this accelerating the cat and mouse game that already exists. Will we have AGI where it's like not even human 
directed. Now you're starting to talk about sci total science fiction world, which like is certainly possible, but then we might have a lot bigger problems on our hands than <laughs> what we're talking about here today. It's hard to predict that kind of future, which would probably mean a fair amount of social upheaval and a lot of different things that monumentally affect our day-to-day -day life. I think the word super intelligence better, always better than AGI, because I, I... I don't know really the difference. They are so similar you know, in a sense. I think super intelligence can be defined that's domain specific. So I can be a super intelligent AI mathematician, right? It's very hard for this super intelligent AI mathematician to fold laundry the best. I, I think it's it's not quite general in a way. The thing with AGI is I don't quite know what it means. I, I think what it means, um, the difference could be that if you think about like, you know, the word of problems that's like a plate and then in the middle you have the easy problems like one plus one equals two, print hello word, right? And then in the, in the edge, you have many different points. Maybe the north point is cure cancer, okay? And the, the west point is solve the my hypothesis. Uh, the South Point can be write a novel that's gonna win the Nobel Prize literature, or you know, be be the generational novel, uh, fiction work. And then you know, you can have the East one as holy laundry. It's a very hard task. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> but but, but right, something more even even better than that, right? Like so, something that can like I don't know, like the sort of like the ultimate question of physical intelligence. The AGI concept seems to be that from the center you in, enlarge the annulus like slowly, right? And like you like you're you're betting on the system that is does really well in writing the Shakespeare equivalent work that can also solve the Riemann hypothesis and cure cancer. That to me feels like AGI, right? Like the plate just keeps being enlarged to, to the edge. I think for me, super intelligent is, hey, I pick the point in the middle, right? And then I pick the goal and then I just go there. Like I just go there one line. I bet on the specific model. I also bet on AI for math being the algorithmic pillar, the, the reasoning platform of AI for science. And that's going to be the future. I think that's going to be the next frontier in AI, um, AI for math, AI for science. I don't, I don't want to uh, sort of get out ahead or differ from like other perspectives at OpenAI on this. But what I'd say I'm excited to work towards is something where this technology can take really meaningful, valuable action for you and help you sort of sift through all of the challenges and opportunities in your life and, and, and get stuff done for you in a really meaningful way. So that's the kind of product that I'm interested in building. I think in the future, we will see the computing platform that supports all of this evolve in massive ways where you know the, the, these technologies can do things way faster than you can. And what that means will be that you can do much more. I'm very bullish on like productivity uh, increasing massively as a result. You know, there's certain things that I do by hand today where I might spend an hour or more doing some like information retrieval drudgery, whereas I can imagine a system that is like massively parallel doing that in minutes or seconds even. And so I'm excited about that. Whatever definition that that fits, I'm not sure, but that's something that I'm excited to see happen and uh, I'm excited to build. My personal take on AGI is simple. It will augment us and will work alongside us as a partner, but direction and perspective will remain fundamentally human. Thank you for watching again and please leave your comments and your definitions in the comment section. Like the video, repost it and subscribe. I really appreciate it. Happy Holidays!